Should you scrap your 2024 Disney World plans in exchange for a 2025 trip instead? Possibly. But before you decide by flipping a coin, let's look at the real reasons why some folks are choosing to hold out on their Orlando vacations until the new year and why others are still holding on to their current year plans no matter what. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. If you've already got a Disney World trip in sight for the end of 2024, please don't let this video freak you out. This is for the folks who still might be on the fence about their Disney vacation decision and need a little extra persuasion one way or the other. And it's also for the folks who wanna see what 2025 might have in store for those who choose to wait. So what are we waiting for? Nothing, let's get to it. Reason number one to wait till 2025 is if you want to use that water park perk. In 2025, you're going to be able to visit one of the Disney water parks without having to worry about the $74 per person ticket. Exciting stuff, right? Yes. Too good to be true? Mm, kind of. Right on January 1st next year, you know, when everyone's just scrambling to go to a water park, anyone staying at any of the Disney-owned hotels, including DVC properties, will receive free tickets to the water parks for everyone on the hotel reservation. And I said right on January 1st, but it's all year next year, all of 2025, any day you arrive. So here are the two big catches for the perk. There's always got to be a catch, right? First of all, you'll be able to use this perk at either Blizzard Beach or Typhoon Lagoon, but not both. And that's because ever since the 2020 shutdowns, both water parks never really stay open at the same time. So one will open and the other one will shut down for routine maintenance. But here's the bigger catch. You can only use your free water park privilege on your hotel check-in day. Granted, you don't have to check into your hotel just yet in order to use that water park perk. So you could technically hop over to that water park just as soon as you cross into the Disney bubble and start enjoying this 2025 benefit as soon as you can. But if you need to drop off your luggage before you start enjoying all that lazy river slash wave pool time, you can still swing by your hotel first thing in the morning and before your room is ready and ask Bell Services to hold on to your stuff so you can go enjoy some fun in the sun. Also, here's a little hack we learned that you might want to try next year if you want to double dip on that water park perk. If you decide to do a split stay next year between two Disney hotels, that means you spend the first half of your vacation in one Disney hotel and the second half in another Disney hotel, you can technically get two water park days for free. For instance, if I decide that I want to stay at Pop Century for the first half of my trip, but then switch over to the Contemporary for the second half, lucky me, I'll be able to have access to that water park perk on both of my hotel check-in days. Now that, my friends, is what we like to call playing chess and not checkers. Now, a big reason why you shouldn't go to Disney World until 2025 actually has nothing to do with Disney World at all. But if you hold back on going to Orlando until later on next year, you have a better chance of timing your visit for when Universal Orlando's third theme park gate is open. Epic Universe is slated to open in 2025 and will be made up of five themed lands, including Celestial Park, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic, Super Nintendo World, How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, and Dark Universe. Now, I've already talked about the details of most of these new lands in a video we released a couple months back, talking about all the major clues Universal has dropped about everything coming to Epic, which you can check out for yourself after we finish up here today. But just recently, we got to learn more about the details of the last Epic Universe area that's been kept under wraps the longest, which was the new Wizarding World section. And it looks incredible. Universal is going to do some groundbreaking stuff over here. They share that in this land, guests will first journey from a muggle park in Paris into the breathtaking spectacle of 1920s Place Cachet, a hidden, bustling shopping district in Wizarding Paris, lined with Hausmannian buildings, shops, sidewalk cafes, and historic Parisian domes rising in the distance. While there's only going to be one ride in this area, it's going to be a revolutionary one. Harry Potter and the Battle at the Ministry will use a unique combination of massive environments, powerful storytelling, and first-of-its-kind ride technology that gives wizards and muggles alike the chance to travel by metro flu from Wizarding Paris to the British Ministry of Magic for the long-awaited trial of the infamous Dolores Umbridge. She's such a baddie. Now upon arrival, guests will enter the ministry's jaw-dropping grand atrium and venture through other departments before boarding magical omnidirectional lifts to watch the trial take place until Umbridge attempts to escape. Guests will have to join Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, and a house elf named Higgledy 
I already love that guy, in a thrilling chase that will propel them up, down, forward, backward, sideways, and more throughout the ministry as they try to capture Umbridge, all while dodging attacks from Death Eaters, rampaging creatures, and more along the way. And for the first time ever inside the Wizarding World, we'll be able to watch a live, full-scale theater production in the heart of it all over at Les Cirque Arcanus. This show will feature live performers and aerialists, high quality puppetry and brilliant special effects where we'll encounter fantastic beasts and you know, where to find them. <laughs> There's so much more I could tell you about this place, but let me reel this all in now since this is a Disney World video after all and we need to refocus. I'm just really excited, okay? Probably the most excited about seeing a Niffler in real life, honestly. Basically, if you're planning to go to Disney World next year, then there's a chance you might be able to plan your visit around Epic Universe's opening timeline, or at the very least, a few months after it initially opens to the public. However, there is something I want to warn you about. Not only do we not have a clear opening timeline for Epic Universe just yet, but there's also a very good chance that Universal is going to need to do some major crowd control when this park first opens. The Vice President of Public Relations for Universal shared some more details on this news, informing us all that Universal will be introducing products in a phased approach, starting with multi-day ticket packages that include an opportunity to visit Epic Universe, in addition to the entire Universal Orlando Resort, for those planning vacations for out. This kind of reminds me of what we had to do for Fantasy Springs over in Tokyo, where you kind of had to get a vacation package that included a visit to that particular park. She also mentioned that Universal plans to offer a range of ticket products to help manage the expected demand for Epic Universe and to ensure all guests visiting have a great experience at this groundbreaking park. So Universal isn't oblivious to the amount of hype they've stirred up for this place, so this new park is going to be wildly popular when it first opens, meaning to make the guest experience as optimal as possible, they'll need to regulate things a bit. In what capacity they'll regulate things is yet to be determined, but we'll make sure to give you a heads up just as soon as we learn more. So just like the words printed across a certain famous singer's t-shirt, there's not a lot going on at the moment when it comes to the rest of the year in Disney World. If you know, you know. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. There are still holiday parties to attend, still Epcot festivals to taste your way around, complete with the new Communicore Hall and Plaza, and there's still the new stage show, The Little Mermaid, a musical adventure coming to Hollywood Studios. But other than that, you're not going to have to worry about battling any major FOMO, as far as we know, if you decide to hold off on a Disney World trip until next year. And that's because a lot of Disney World's big new stuff is currently in the works, which we learned all about during the D23 fan event that happened on August 9th to the 11th. For example, following in the footsteps of previous iconic nighttime spectaculars like the Main Street Electrical Parade and Spectro Magic, the new Disney Starlight Parade for Magic Kingdom is scheduled to launch in the summer of 2025. The new parade is going to feature a star-kissed constellation of Disney dreams brought to life by the magic of the Blue Fairy. This new nighttime entertainment will also use the latest technology to tell new stories about some of Disney's most classic characters. And in the winter of 2025, you're going to see the new Zootopia show officially take over the Tree of Life Theater. The Test Track re-theme is also slated to open later next year, complete with a queue that will feature six distinct exhibits that celebrate all those automotives from across the years, as well as the people behind them. Now, we've still got quite a way to go before we're going to see the Tropical Americas thriving over where Dino Land USA is located now inside Animal Kingdom, but you can expect to see an Indiana Jones ride plus an Encanto ride making their grand debuts in this re-themed area later on in 2027. And while we don't know when these additions are set to come to life in Disney World, we do know that Magic Kingdom is currently working on a Villains Land expansion that's going to be just beyond Big Thunder Mountain. Now, in early 2025, more construction will begin to take place inside Frontierland as Pixar's Cars starts to take over the scene. The Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island will be transformed into this brand new land coming to the park, where guests will be put in the driver's seat as Disney quite literally explores a new frontier in Frontierland. Construction will also start up next year in Hollywood Studios for a brand new Monsters, Inc. land, where you'll not only be allowed to step inside the city of Monstropolis for the first time ever, but you'll also be able to ride on the back of a door, just like Mike and Sully, with Disney's first ever suspended coaster. An opening date for this land and a location for it are yet to be revealed, but stay tuned. 
So the internet is still all up in a tizzy with the latest multi-pass changes. So much so that it can be pretty intimidating to think about diving into a Disney World vacation at the moment when you're wanting to rely on lightning lanes to help you skip over the park standby queues, but you're not quite sure what on earth is going on with them. And for that, I've got good news and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Hopefully you said bad, because that's what I'm starting with. I just like to get the band-aid all ripped off. The bad news is that Disney's still working out multi-pass and single-pass kinks. We've experienced firsthand some rather bizarre My Disney Experience app glitches right after the new multi-slash-single-pass launch. A few examples, one of our reporters had chosen all of their multi-pass selections only to find out that, once they proceeded to the next page, their Tiana's Bayou Adventure Lightning Lane was suddenly no longer available. Another one of our reporters experienced some glitches on the home screen of the MDE app, where every now and then their Lightning Lane selections would just disappear disappear from the screen, even though we still had them. Additionally, the app was frequently reminding them that they could check for another available experience, even though they actually couldn't because they were still holding on to their maximum of three lightning lanes. And then another one of our reporters noticed that sometimes when you hit modify in the MDE app, it takes you to the confirmation screen instead. Again, the system is very, very new, and for the most part, we were able to use it all right and still find a lot of success in it. However, much like waiting a few months after a ride or attraction first opens so that you can experience it when it's got a little more practice under its belt, you may also want to wait until the initial oopsie daisies of multi-pass have been smoothed over. As much as they can be, that is, technology is never going to be reliable 100% of the time. That's just full-fledged facts. So here's the good news. Whether you decide to use multi slash single pass in 2024 or 2025, we're releasing videos, social media updates, and DFB posts regularly to help you navigate this new system as seamlessly as possible. We've also got a free digital guide to all things Lightning Lane that you can use to study up on multi slash single passes before you book them. And because this guide can be downloaded straight to your phone, you can also use it as a cheat sheet to help you remember how to use these passes when you're in the midst of your Disney trips. Just scan the QR code you see on your screen now or head over to disneyfoodblog.com slash multipass after this. Again, totally free and super, super useful because we've been using this thing since the very beginning and we've pretty much done everything you can with it. Now, Tiana's Bayou Adventure opened in Magic Kingdom on June 28th, 2024, and it opened with a lot of concerns. While it seems those initial technical difficulties are starting to smooth out, there are still concerns about being able to get in line for this rethemed log flume in the first place. At the time of recording this video, you've got two options when it comes to getting in line for Tiana's during regular park hours. Your first option is the free virtual queue system, which goes live on My Disney Experience daily at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. And your second option is the paid multi-pass lightning lane, which you can pre-select ahead of your trip either seven days out if you're staying at a Disney-owned hotel or three days out if you're staying off property. So here's the problem with both of these. Free or not, they both book up for Tiana's fairly quickly at the moment, as in the clock strikes 7 a.m. for the virtual queue, and within 10 seconds, those boarding group numbers will have already been distributed in full, meaning you'll have to try again and try to be quicker when that second chance 1 p.m. drop goes live. Meanwhile, folks who are staying on Disney property during their vacation will definitely have the multi-pass upper hand. That's why a 2025 vacation to Disney World could come with a major silver lining. Tiana's Bayou Adventure could very well drop the virtual queue altogether by next year, or maybe even before that, because the novelty of its newness will begin to dwindle and the overall demand is going to start to simmer down. Plus, despite this being Florida and all, it gets cold in the winter. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to want to go on a ride that gets me soaked when the sun isn't going to be helping me dry off anytime soon. I always remember heading for Splash Mountain first thing on winter days because I knew that the wait was going to be five minutes. And that means there's a good chance you'll be able to enter into a normal standby line for Tiana's if you just hold off on going to Magic Kingdom for a little bit. Why am I making this assumption when both Tron Light Cycle Run and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind have been holding on to their own virtual queues for years? Well, that's what Disney said. Disney stated right before the log flume's opening that while a standby queue will not be available during the attraction's initial opening days, they expect to open a standby queue soon after the attraction's opening. This is probably, again, because of the difference in the temperature. So your chances for getting on this brand new ride could very well improve simply because you choose to visit in 2025 instead of 2024. Okay, look, Disney's been real vague when it comes to the could be, should be new restaurants we're supposed to look forward to eating in sometime this year, but surely, surely we can have a better chance of actually eating at said new dining locations if we hold out on going to Disney World till 2025? This is where I have to turn my attention to the boardwalk in. 
poor boardwalk. Initially, we were told that the cake bake shop table service and the blue ribbon corn dog stand being built here were going to open by the end of 2023. Then both of those opening dates got pushed back to early 2024. And now, well, we're into the second half of the year and still don't have any confirmed opening dates for either of these spots yet. That doesn't mean we won't get confirmed opening dates or that either or both dining locations won't open before the end of the year. But again, 2025 should make grabbing a snack or meal at either location less of a gamble, hopefully. Meanwhile, over at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, there's been a major DVC expansion going on over at the brand new Island Tower, which will house new DVC villas as well as new retail locations and dining options too. We haven't heard much about what these dining options are gonna look like just yet, but what we do know is that the Island Tower is slated to open on December 17th, 2024. So yeah, you technically could still book a vacation toward the end of 2024 and possibly eat at a new Polynesian Village restaurant. But if the new restaurant takes reservations, there might be a good chance of them all booking up pretty quickly during those end of the year holiday trips. Also in 2025, we're going to be able to dine at two new locations. First, we've got the Spaceship Earth Lounge in Epcot, which will be inspired by the stories and shapes and enduring legacy of this park's icon. The decor will draw inspiration from Spaceship Earth's unique geodesic sphere and offer a zen space where families can hang out and take an afternoon breather. Then there's the Pirates of the Caribbean themed tavern that's going to be coming to Adventureland in Magic Kingdom next year. According to Disney, this rambunctious watering hole will offer a welcoming haven for all pirate kind, big and small, and everyone in between. That means this lounge will not be reserved for adults only. Disney teased a section of grogs and grub that'll be served here, so it sounds like we could get some good old pirate food before or after a ride through the classic attraction. But the moral of the story, waiting to go to Disney World until 2025 could very well increase your chances of dining someplace nice and shiny and new while you're there. That being said, Disney World is still brimming with hundreds of restaurants, some of which haven't even been around for a whole year yet. So if you're still planning on going to Disney World super soon and you need help deciding where you need to go, be sure to check out our 2024 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining over on the dfbstore.com website. This reviews every single solitary restaurant. You know we've been to them all and we've been to them all multiple times. And all of that is in one digital guide. And don't worry, all you 2025 travelers will have an updated guide coming out for you too, so stay tuned. Remember, if you want to save money on your new DFB Guide companion, type in the code YouTube before you check out. So simply put, if you hold off on taking your big Disney World trip until next year, you have more time to save for it. This also gives you more time to pace out payments for vacation packages as you see fit. While initially you'll need to put down that $200 deposit for your hotel and tickets, Disney gives you the chance to make flexible payments leading up to your trip, and that means paying as little or as much at a time as you'd like, just as long as you pay off that final amount 30 days prior to your arrival date. You should be in the clear and free to make your own payment plan that you feel the most comfortable with. This is also a good chance to stock up on some Disney gift cards leading up to your 2025 trip too. You can find several Disney gift cards discounted at stores near you like Sam's Club and Target and BJ's Wholesale. Think of these Disney gift cards like a vacation savings account. You put back a chunk of money on these cards every month or every few weeks or after every paycheck, and by the time your vacation rolls around, you got all these extra funds to spend however you'd like while you're at the parks. And in general, having more time to figure out a vacation budget is always a good plan. And if you need more help with that, all you got to do is ask. Our friends over at Small World Vacations are travel agent extraordinaires, and they've been helping families plan and budget Disney trips for years. Plus, their services won't cost you an extra cent, which is also great when you're in major budgeting slash saving mode. If you want to reach out for a free quote, I'll drop their link down in the bio for you. Just let them know that AJ sent you. So what do you think? Are you team 2024 or team 2025? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to pick up our new and 100% free lightning lane guide over at disneyfoodblog.com slash multipass. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.